So uh, today I'm going to be presenting on two projects. I'm going to try and get this done in 15 minutes, so it's a lot, so bear with me. Uh, it's going to be Wayfund, which is crowdfunding, decentralized crowdfunding, and it's going to be Boardroom, which is decentralized governance. So what is Wayfund? So Wayfund, I can break it down into two things really simply. It's crowdfunding and it's digital asset issuance, and it's all done on Ethereum. So uh, when we think about digital assets, we can think about equity, rebates, financial instruments, loyalty points, uh, discounts, products, coupons. Uh, and uh, it feels a lot like Kickstarter. And I'm sure a lot of you have used Kickstarter. You've used things like that. Uh, Wayfund is designed to feel like that, but it runs completely on smart contracts at a fraction of the cost and can do a lot more. So this is the uh, Wayfund uh, version one kind of discovery interface. So this is the interface you're going to see when you're you know, looking through campaigns, trying to figure out what you want to contribute to. It's very much like Kickstarter, but everything's in Ether. Uh, you can see here this is uh, the interface to actually donate to a campaign. So you can see there's some critical differences. The funds are in Ether. And as well, we have at the bottom there tokens issued. So when people contribute, you can do this really cool thing where uh, you'll get secure issuance of tokens back to the person who contributed. So this, this creates a very, very interesting system. So what is it technically? It's the most simple dApp design there is. It's one smart contract and one UI. Uh, and uh, uh, I like to think of it as having a lot more meaning than code. <laughs> Uh, and it's much bigger than you think it is. Um, so a uh, sort of interesting uh, element to this is I like to see it as rebuilding the one-to-one -one relationship. So there's no VC firms, there's no lawyers, there's no management, there's no middlemen, there's no payment processors, no banks, and there's a lot less transactions. It is between the investor and the company. Um, just you and your money. And uh, when we think about uh, sort of investors are now incentivized to use and promote the product. So, so this is kind of a second idea as well. Um, when you invest in these products, you're now incentivized to say, okay, I'm going to go out and I'm going to actually use them. I'm going to sell them. I'm going to promote them. This changes the dynamic for your investors and for your customers. So an example that I like to bring up is the coffee shop example. So imagine you kind of walk down the street, and there's a coffee shop you really like, and they're trying to raise some money. So with a conventional crowdfunding campaign, they'd raise money, and it just sits there. With equity crowdfunding, particularly decentralized crowdfunding, the relationship changes. You walk into the coffee shop, and uh, you say, OK, uh, you know, I've donated to your campaign. I have verifiable. Uh, evidence that's written into the blockchain that not only am I a contributor, but I have so many shares of this coffee shop. Now all of a sudden, the relationship's taken a completely different turn. This may mean I can make decisions in this coffee shop. I can maybe, maybe next month I decide what coffee they're going to bring in. Now I'm also invested in whether they do well or they don't. So I'm going to start promoting their business and creating a really sort of dynamic relationship. Um, this is something we just haven't had before. So it's not VC. It's not venture capital. It catalyzes your user base. And this is something that's kind of related to equity crowdfunding in general. But with Ethereum, it really does take a different turn. So we own the shares of what we use. And this is just coming back to that one idea. Uh, and this means more power for the everyday consumer and the everyday investor. So um, you know, you're going to start seeing ownership of various roles and businesses by everyday people. And it's going to happen at an alarmingly fast rate. And um, it all comes back to this other idea, which is we're going to govern what we own so, and thus govern what we use. Um, OK. So. How do we feel about this so far? We good? Everyone's, yeah? All right, cool. <laughs> All right, so second thing is um, 
we're raising money, we're building a user base. This solves a big problem in business. It's just getting users, getting customers. Um, and I like to think of this as, as well, offering high finance to everybody. Uh, so financial services that were once available to massive corporations, you need tons of lawyers, you need all this sort of infrastructure. Now we're just giving that to everybody. We're giving that to the coffee shop, we're giving that to uh, your neighbor down the street. Uh, everyone uh, will get access to these services. Uh, having a built-in user base lowers your risk, because now you have customers. And um, when we think about funding, I like to think, of it, uh, think about it as uh, free speech. And so I like to think of Wayfund as being not only an investment platform, but also a freedom of speech platform. So another interesting aspect is that the shares that will be raised on Wayfund will be a standardized token. And that means that they'll be uh, immediately tradable on decentralized exchanges. Uh, so this creates sort of a very interesting uh, dynamic. And I think um, it's really interesting to think about what if the $2 billion that Kickstarter raised uh, over their years of, of business was financialized? You know, what if that was equity shares? What if that was digital assets? How much more money would that have generated in business if it just didn't sit there? It would have you know, tripled, quadrupled. Um, so this is just an interesting thought to think about. Um, the contractual design patterns are fairly simple. Uh, Wayfund's designed in a way that's just outwardly extens extensible. It's a very, very simple contract. It's less than 100 lines of code. This can talk with more complex controllers, and those controllers can then talk to tokens. Um, so this creates sort of an interesting uh, design chain that's completely modular uh, and very extensible. So two challenges with Wayfund. Uh, we can think about social readiness and jurisdictional regulation. Um, and, and to get into these just a little bit, social readiness, just adoption of ether and adoption of this sort of new paradigm of thinking, this new technology. And as well, jurisdictional regulation, just needing to catch up to this sort of new paradigm of thought. Um, so addressing these two challenges, we can think about educating the populace, the social evolution, uh, and also just support from government and business in general. Um, and there's a lot of different interesting ways this is happening already, with the Jobs Act, uh, which is kind of freeing up equity crowdfunding, and also non-US regulators. Uh, so how do we make sure these projects don't fail? This is another kind of critical aspect of the, the whole thing. Um, you're going to raise money uh, on Wayfund. You're going to raise money in decentralized crowdfunding. But how do we make sure it doesn't fail? Uh, this is when the second project that I'm working on comes in, called Boardroom. So the idea here is that you'll deploy a board uh, and uh, then go out, and you're going to raise capital for that. Uh, the beneficiary of the campaign can actually be a contract, and that can be a board. And this is where you'll have a sort of dynamic voting process come into play, and you're going to have um, just some really interesting dynamics happening where orgs will just pop up, and then funds will be raised for it, and the equity raised uh, will actually have decision-making power in the organization, and this will all happen in a contractual space. Um, so let's get into a little bit of a boardroom walkthrough. And I have five minutes, so I'll try and get into it as best I can. So this is the opening of boardroom, and it's the first public showing. So yay. Uh, <laughs> woo, yeah. yeah. So uh, um, what you're seeing here is a visualization of a board. Uh, and this is Pied Piper. Um, and uh, so here we're just seeing some basic membership and proposals and uh, these sorts of things. So a board is just um, boardroom and these boards is just a single contract on the Ethereum network. It's representing uh, the boardroom structure. Uh, and this can be used to create a complex governance structure that can help in allocating funds, holding membership, and doing kind of very complex proposal systems. So here we're just seeing a, a basic dashboard, um, some details about the board, uh, the address, the balance. Um, we'll go into proposals. So actually, before proposals, let's go into membership. 
So here we're seeing just some members of the board. Um, and uh, each member can only join uh, through proposals. So it's all proposal based. And it all needs to be through the democratic gateway of the board. Um, when we talk about proposals, um, uh, they're statically typed, which means that um, you can't have a board member try and cheat another by having a proposal that is, does one thing, but then kind of does another, actually. Um, so here's just some types, if you can see that. Uh, you can see allocating funds from the board's budget, adding and removing members, electing chairs, subcommittees. You're basically going to get everything you want out of a company structure simulated in a smart contract and within um, the boardroom UI. And as well, we're building boardroom to be completely extensible, both uh, in configuration hooks and also the proposals can outwardly talk to other contracts, which creates a whole sort of unlimited amount of um, interesting use cases. Um, think about creating proposals that um, move tokens around uh, or equity. Think about complex voting structures that are based on tokens. Um, so this is the sort of bread and butter of boardroom. And it all comes back to the one philosophy of just simulating a, a governance structure in a contract on Ethereum. So with each proposal, you can see here, there's just some uh, various details. Proposals have a certain kind of structure um, that allows for sort of rigid, uh, a rigid data type. Um, there's five different ones. So here you can see just some proposals that have been executed. So this is adding Ehrlich to the board. Uh, this is sending funds from the board. Um, it's a very simple interface. And we saw a little earlier that um, there was something like this. Uh, I believe uh, Andreas um, did something like this with tokens and boards. I think a big thing about boardroom is that there's a lot of data to visualize with governance structures and contracts. And so um, you really do need a dedicated UI to handle that. Um, and there's just a lot of information to kind of go through. Um, so between the two, I'm just going to pop back to my presentation real fast, because I'm apparently out of time. Um, so what, oh, OK, we'll go right through then. Uh, OK, I will be quick. Uh, so this is just some organizing innovation. OK, yes. Uh, what's next for boardroom and Wayfund? OK. Um, total world domination, yes. Um, so for Wayfund, we're going to have a lot more decentralized file storage integration or distributed file storage in integration, IPFS, et cetera, complex token controllers. Um, we're going to have a new UI, and we're going to put that on the test net. Um, with Boardroom, we're going to get into some really interesting custom voting structures, dynamic membership, middleware, uh, which is kind of outward extensible uh, tech that will help bridge Boardroom to other services. Uh, new UI, and then release that on the, the Ethereum test net. Uh, here's just some new screenshots of the new UI, which you're seeing for the first time. Um, it's all cleaned up and nice. And if you have any questions, I'll be floating around with this shirt on, most likely. And uh, wow, that started a little rigid, but I think I kind of moved up a little bit as I went along. Uh, thanks for bearing with me. And um, I hope this kind of made sense, and it was a little lighter today or with this. So thank, thanks, guys. And awesome. <laughs>